Hi, welcome to Tiff Scene. I'm Drew Brown, and we are here with Lorjean of Fresh Collective. Hi. Thank you so much for opening your store for oh, us today. My pleasure. Um, can you tell us a little bit of what, how did this come about? Well, Fresh Collective is 10 years old now. So this, mm -hmm. we're in our Queen Street location, and that was our first location ever. And um, so we opened up here in 2003, and our mandate was creating a space for local designers to sell their products. And in the beginning, I was one of the local designers. So mm -hmm. the 10 years later, I've now retired my line and really focused on retailing. Uh -huh. And the business has evolved a lot over those years. So we used to operate where designers, we'd rent out space and designers would help us run the store. But we've now built up a re uh, retail framework where okay. we're like the retail partner for designers. And designers can do their thing. And then we That's partner true. up with them to sell their stuff. And what kind of goes into the selection process? And not to give away all your secrets, but right. like, what kind of goes into the selection process to make sure that they're the right fit for Fresh Collection? For what we're doing. Well, we really, over the years, have developed a really loyal clientele. Mm -hmm. And um, we know those women really well. So a lot of the things we look for is a certain versatility. We look for um, pieces that can be um, used as wardrobe builders. So it's not like the latest trend. It's gotcha. something that, you know, it might um, pay homage to the trend, but mm -hmm. it's going to last you for several seasons. And our customers really love to express their personality, so it's going to be something that they can mix and match and have fun with and really make a statement. Now, being a store that focuses on kind of independent young designers, local designers, um, how do you compete with the kind of fast fashion that is kind of taken over with the H&Ms and the Zara? I mean, like, you know, the Forever 21s of the world. Yeah. Where, you know, you have to kind of compete where you can buy a shirt for like two to the box. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, how for do you, sure. How do you kind of create your own niche and yeah. kind of stay out there? Well, in some ways, the, that um, homogeny that's going on in the fashion market in general has created a real opening for us because there are a lot of women who, you know, if you're like 42 and you're the art director at a magazine, you don't necessarily want to be in the same um, $29 skirt as your assistant, <laughs> you yeah, know, your 26-year-old yeah. assistant. Yeah, absolutely. So what our um, product offers is a real specialty. It's really like designer level stuff um, mm -hmm. at prices that people can afford and with wearability and it fits real women. So we've created a real authenticity to the fashion, to absolutely. the fashion, you know, fashion scene or the fashion designer, like sort of flip the, the snobbery of um, what gotcha. might be thought of as typical, you know, fashion runway stuff on its head. And our stuff is for like regular women who want to look great, like teachers yeah. and moms and midwives and nurses and professors and like all kinds of women who are busy and awesome and they need comfortable clothes they look fantastic in. And these are, and these are th that they can kind of have for a while as opposed to disposable. Yeah, well kind that's of another thing is our customers are socially conscious. Mm -hmm. So the you know buying like tons and tons of stuff and just getting rid of it each season doesn't um, you know, fit their core values. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to have a little bit of fun. If you could pick a theme song to kind of, you know, just that would be your theme song, or it could be the store's theme song, what would it be? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I'm thinking, I can't think of the name, but is it, um, is it Doris Day, I, I Love Being a Girl? Oh, okay. That one? Yeah. Okay. And why that song? <laughs> Just because there's a real femininity here. We have a lot of fun playing dress up and really being, mm -hmm. you know, out there as, um, with a, a fair um, nod, I guess, to femininity. Gotcha. So, and who, who are some of these designers that you have in the, in the store? Well, we represent about 25 uh, local designers. And okay. some, so mostly our focus is Toronto, but we have some Montreal designers as well. And okay. they're really um, at various stages in their career. So some mm -hmm. of them are really established and they've been with us a long time. And, you know, this formula really works year after year to sell their product and connect Absolutely. with their market. And then we have other designers who might be at a smaller level, whether they're just starting out or it's something they do um, part-time. And mm -hmm. in those cases, we just carry a small selection of their stuff and sort of sprinkle it in to create. So mm -hmm. our, our job is really curating all the product yes. so that it really hits mm -hmm. the, the customer and they're like, oh my gosh, it's always fresh and new. It's always beautiful stuff and it's always like selected with them in mind. Absolutely. Well, being able to have to be kind of focused on you know local talent mm -hmm. um, is a great thing, and so to be and also be able to have three stores yeah. shows that you're successful at it. Yeah. That the model is successful. <laughs> what is what else has been one of your biggest accomplishments thus far? Well, the, really developing the business model that's going to work. It's taken mm -hmm. you know it's gone through like a lot of different evolutions, and we've been doing it on a shoestring budget and with all kinds of challenges out there. Mm -hmm. And um, what we're really finding is that you know the best that we can do is to create something that is sort of like this is the way we operate, but within that we have this flexibility to work with each designer in their own way. 
and sort of create a, an individual relationship that works. So for example, you mentioned you know, fast fashion, and we have one designer who sews all her dresses herself. So she's kind of the fastest fashion out there, <laughs> because literally we call her like at the end of a weekend and go, okay, we sold you know, the polka dot one in a six, eight, ten, and she goes, oh my gosh, I'm going to run out and get more fabric. She's sewing those up that day and bringing them in for like Thursday. Wow. So that's like super fast fashion. So that's mm -hmm. an advantage we have over um, the chains. But then Absolutely. she can only produce so much, but, of course. Uh, so much, exactly. <laughs> what kind of advice, being a retailer, also, you were a former designer yourself, mm -hmm. like what could you kind of give to these to young, young bucks? Yeah. This is a question I get asked a lot, you know, what's your number one piece of advice? Mm -hmm. And I guess I, would, I always go back to realize that you're running a business first. Mm -hmm. So really what you need to create is the business inside which you can be a designer. So a designer yeah. is a job where you design clothes that, you know, sell. Absolutely. And that's challenging enough. But inside of that or around that, you have to build, you know, marketing and market research and, you know, quality control systems and just like everything. How are you going to finance it? How are you going to, mm -hmm. you know, just make it grow? Like all of those things. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, if there's any way that they can get into like a business, um, like a self-employment program or something where you're going to be learning about how to build the business around which you can succeed as a designer. Absolutely, because it's true. Because I think some people don't really have the business side, yep. the creative side, but they forget that it is a business. Well, and it can be really heartbreaking. Like, I've worked mm. with about 200 designers over these years, and I know myself, I've gone through so many ups and downs and heartbreak and thinking, mm. like, you know, why? Why did it not turn out? Yeah, why, why was that? You're such a disaster. And really, like, tearing myself up about it. And I know mm. a lot of designers experience that, too, that sort of creative angst, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And once you can start to get serious about the business and what it is to make a business, it helps to deal with that, because it's like, you know, then you have projections and you, you can just get like perspective on it. Yeah. What, what is the most challenging part of the job? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, there's so many challenges and they would be the same as running any business. Any business you know, absolutely. all your, the best laid plans just go completely out the window when the yeah. reality hits and, you yeah. know, like even just this week we had the flooding and power outage for two days. Oh, yes. you know? yeah. So like you, as much as you project and try to enact a plan, you also have to just be flexible for what's coming your way. So just managing mm -hmm. that, I guess, managing the unexpected. And how often are you, you, you said you have about 25 designers now, mm -hmm. like, are you always looking for new ones or you kind of feel like you're at the number where you want to be? Well, we're, we're always looking for ways to, you know, make sure that we have the best of the best on the rack. So our commitment gotcha. to our customers is that we have the best, most exciting stuff. And so we're always refining our systems about how do we evaluate you know, what's working and what's not, and when it's time to retire a line. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes it, whether it's a line or a certain piece or style, it'll go gangbusters for a while and then, and then nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and so then that's when we have to look at, okay, so can we get something else from that designer or is that just a style that's over? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, you try to put a science to it because it's a business, but at the Absolutely. same time, there's so much like all of a sudden, why does nobody like pink anymore? <laughs> but, <you know? laughs> yes, exactly. So what is kind of like the personality of the, you know, of the Fresh Collective, you know, customer. Woman, customer. Mm -hmm. Well, generally, so we, we actually created a, um, a profile so that we could look at, um, okay. you know, like, so we could always have that person in mind. Uh -huh. And so we created a woman named Joan, and she's about 38 years old. Okay. And she is, you know, um, a professional. She's self-employed. She's juggling a lot of things. She has a kid and a dog and a husband. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so in many ways, the profile is, um, you know, it is a lot me. Like, I created the store of my dreams. And yeah, then, so it. it's not um, surprising. I'm maybe a little older than 38 by now. <laughs> And I have two dogs and one kid, but, but yeah. you know, my life is really the life of the Fresh Collective customer. So it's, you know, racing down here to do this interview and then racing off to another speaking engagement. That's and true. this afternoon I was with my son because he's out of school for the summer. So, you know, it's a real juggling it's a, act. It's a real juggling it's, act. It's like that movie with Sarah Jessica Parker. Like, I don't know how she does it all or whatever. I don't know. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, <I'm> <laughs> anyway, but yeah. But no, uh, so where do you see Fresh, Fresh Collective within the next five years? Well, what we're really working on as a business now for Fresh Collective is um, creating the systems that are going to allow us to grow to multiple locations. Mm -hmm. So we're doing, we run three locations now, and everything we're doing, we're like, but how would this work if we had 10 locations? Like, who would go do that? Or who would, you know, so mm -hmm. everything needs to be like a system on how we do it. Absolutely. And um, so in the next five years, we will have more locations. We're First, we need to lock down making sure that these three run perfectly, perfectly and how we're going to yeah. do that. Yes, yeah, so I don't want to say we're going to have like, 700 locations worldwide in the next five years. We will eventually. 
But do you, and so do you pick and choose designers for each location because they are a different clientele? Yep, a little bit of that. So we, we really, you know, we rely on our store managers to, to help curate the stores. Mm -hmm. And so we notice in Roncesvalles, for example, the customers are a lot more local. They're real neighborhood women. They tend to, they trend a little bit older than our other stores. Mm -hmm. And so they're looking for just slightly different things. So in a lot of ways, our stores are stocked very similarly. And so that, you know, people can rely on that fresh collective experience that they mm -hmm. uh, depend on. But um, then we sort of see what's working in each location and make decisions accordingly. Gotcha. Makes sense. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out. And I know you have to juggle some more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. We really appreciate it. Uh, taking this oh, time you're out welcome. To thank you for the, coming. Give us a fresh collective perspective on everything. Yeah, cool. Okay. Fresh collective perspective. I like that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> thank you. Exactly.